I can thank you so much for joining us. We're seeing a scenario where the boss has been down this whole week purely because of what's been happening in the banking front. What's the update on the boss today? Yeah, hi, Fanley. The market traded uh, flat basically day on day wise. Uh, the ASI closed at uh, 22,175. Um, week on week, the, the, the ASI lost 6%, over 6%. Uh, due primarily, of course, to the recently announced banking reforms and uh, Mr. Lamido's big stick. So um, the top um, 11 stocks, 11 stocks gained overall, 30 traded flat, while 57 stocks lost. Still, in the, still a great um, an indicator of momentum in the market is that the bears have taken hold and we may see that continue. Uh, amongst the top gainers were, interestingly, two banks, Diamond and um, Guaranteed Trust, Orlando also gained on the bank of its uh, recently announced results. Uh, the top losers were, were AP, um, Total, and ETI. Um, the, the general trend in the market this week was a direct reflection of the uncertainty that has plagued, that has plagued the economy given the banking reforms and the, uh, and the surprising moves by the CBN. So we expect that to continue into the next week, but as you can see from um, from the appreciation of GT Bank and Diamond, we think value investors will have an eye for a good thing uh, coming back into the market. We could see the trend. We may see. Now, this is, not, this is, of course, buying any further shocks. We may see the trend reverse in the coming weeks. All right, let's Finally. take a look. All right, let's take a look at Oando's results. 32.6% increase in turnover. Can they sustain these levels? I think they can sustain it, given the, uh, given the upstream asset they acquired. Orlando's management, as you know, is very aggressive, focused, and it's, um, and it's hell-bent hell -bent on, uh, on dominating its niche. We think Orlando's top line will continue to increase. However, as you know, depreciation on those acquired assets, um, as, well as, as well as higher interest costs on debt, may affect the bottom line. As you can see from the result, the bottom line, I think, uh, grew by just 4%, a major digression from the, t from the top line. So we think, we think in, the coming, in the coming years, Orlando's bottom line would definitely catch up with its top line growth uh, as they sweat those assets they've acquired. Finally? Can the company cut down on their operating costs, which are rather high at the moment? I think they can. But, but, but to expect deep operating costs, given that the company is still bent on expanding and will continue to acquire assets, uh, maybe, maybe playing a fool's game. What we think will likely happen is the top line will increase, and as they sweat those assets, uh, the profits will improve as well. And take us through what's the outlook for Orlando in the second half? You said, come again, Fanny. What's the that. outlook for Orlando going forward? Uh, I would say the outlook for Orlando would, um, in, in our own estimation, is stable. We don't expect any, any drama. However, I must add that, uh, that, that, given, that given that the Niger Delta Peace uh, Initiative is pottering on, uh, we, may see, we may see a reduction in its, uh, in its interest cost and um, on outlook as well. Yeah. And take us through expectations for next week on the bulls. On the bulls for next week, we think the bearish trend may continue. However, we would, we, would see, we would see major, major value investors go back into the market. And so we could see a recovery in blue, in blue chip stocks. As, uh, as any adept investor is aware, uh, when, you have, when you have a major bearish trend like this, which of course is fueled by fear, not, um, uh, not a shake in the fundamentals, uh, you, you would see value investors eventually come back in. We think that time is near. Uh, as, indicative, um, as indicated by the position of GT Bank and Diamond Bank. So that's, that's, that's our own impression.